scientist's work is not only in the lab, and a professor's work is not only in the classroom. Vitally important to the scientific procedure is work done out in the field, or, as we like to call it in the scholarly communities, field work. In the past, I have been to many exotic places in search of wild and wondrous beasts in the wild. Places like Africa, Kenya, Congo, Madagascar, Vietnam, Burma, and Pangaea. This year, however, Burma has been hit by a particularly trying yam famine, and the university has asked its faculty to tighten our belts and to cut back on some of our funding for scientific research. I'm here to tell you, however, our viewers, that if you want to contribute to the scientific procedure, you don't need to go out to a crazy location or a magical world. You can find science in the wild in your own backyard. A lot of people don't know that in the front of a house, there's not much to see, but if you come around to the side, things can be very different in the back. Now, one of the first obstacles you might encounter in your research is one of these man-made barriers called a fence. But with a little forethought and some clever thinking, they're not too difficult to surmount. Look at the size of the sphincter that laid one of these beauties. So in order to capture a wild beast, there are four tracking steps that you need to know. Step one, look. Step two, see. And step four, touch. Now, for instance, we look and we see this stump. We see that the stump is there, and then we go over. And we touch the stump. And that lets us know that that stump is actually there. That we can actually scientifically examine it. And that is how you find a beast. When you capture a beast, what is it that you want to do with it? Well, there's three options. You can categorize it, say, what kind of beast is this? Is it a cat? Is it a duck? Is it maybe this thing? I don't know what this is. So, here we go. We can look at the other two things we can do. Well, categorize it, I don't know what it is. Can I put it to work? Doesn't seem very useful. So I'm gonna go with option three. I'm gonna put it in my science satchel for later work, later examination. Right, now that we know the basics, the essentials of going into the wild, let's venture deeper. Let's see what we can find over the garden fence. Now you might be concerned about dangerous wildlife back in the woods. But if you follow some safety precautions, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Now something you want to consider is, do you see any kind of dangerous wildlife? I don't see any. Now that tells me that it's probably not there, but we can't be sure. It might be very small, but so large even, that it's like a tree. We can't even see. It's too big. But you might ask, what if it's just lying in wait? Well, there's one very easy way to test it. So what you want to do is you want to take a rock. See? You want to take a rock and you want to throw it. You want to wait. Now, you can't be sure with one of us. We might have to do two. Or even four. So, let's try it again. Nothing happened. And that tells me it's 
probably safe to go home. There's always a risk to science. And that's why I love it. After a long day of adventure. Look! I've got to. I've got to. Is a bumble child. All right. They're the worst thing around in this area. They prey on native species. They eat everything. These are very bad for the environment. And it's our duty to destroy this one right now. Oh my God. Run! I have diplomatic immunity. Go! Five miles to the north. Don't wait the strawman. I'll come for you. Go. 